welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides me for tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out. All their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy at the request of Patreon subscriber Spunky, and this is Null Drifter Stifleknot. Stifleknot is, of course, a deck built around Phyrexian Dreadnought. This deck has existed basically since Scourge, when Stifle was printed. People figured out this interaction. I think for a while, Phyrexian Dreadnought was actually errated, so this interaction didn't work, and then they changed it back. Long history with this deck over many years of Magic the Gathering. More recently, we've seen it alongside Dressdown and Doorkeeper Thrall. Dressdown being just a cool interactive card you can play in Legacy that also happens to turn on any number of Dreadnoughts that are in your hand. Because if they don't have the ability to sacrifice 12 creatures, then you just get a 1 mana 12 12 trample. Doorkeeper Thrall does the same. Artifacts and creatures don't cause abilities to trigger. Brexian Dreadnought is both. Stifle, you counter the trigger. A bunch of ways to sneak a 12-12 into play for the cheap. Null Drifter is a cool new card from Modern Horizons 3 that works beautifully in this deck because the way that all of the Eldrazi cards throughout Magic are templated is that what would traditionally be a Enters the Battlefield trigger is an on-cast trigger instead. This it was originally to evoke the flavor of these things are really hard to stop. Even if you have the counterspell, you're still taking some amount of damage or some kind of effect. But what that means for this deck is if you play a Dress Down or a Doorkeeper Thrall, and then you evoke Null Drifter, when you cast a spell, draw two cards. You draw the two cards on cast. It does not matter at that point if this creature has any abilities once it's in play, because it's not in play yet. On cast, you draw two cards. And then when it resolves, it no longer has the ability that it must be sacrificed to the evoke. Which means you, for three mana, get to draw two cards and put a 4-4 four, four Flying Annihilator 1 into play. That is a big, scary, crazy creature with a bunch of cool value attached. The first pro point I ever got back in the day when pro points were part of the Magic Pro system was a Legacy Grand Prix where I played Food Chain Combo with Muldrifter in it. Where I would evoke Muldrifter, draw two cards, and then net three mana by eating it to Food Chain before it sacrificed itself. Similar vibes here. Obviously, very different thing, but abusing Evoke, getting card draw in a spot where you mostly just want the creature or the mana the creature would represent. That was kind of a meandering story to say. I love Muldrifter in Legacy, and Null Drifter is much bigger than Muldrifter. The flip side is we're basically never going to cast Null Drifter. Null Drifter in decks, like you could get to five mana, it happens. Getting to seven in a deck with only 19 lands and four of them are wasteland seems pretty unlikely, but I guess it, it'll happen if you play enough games. You can also stifle the evoke trigger that just costs an extra mana on the way in. So we have 11 ways to enable Null Drifter and Dreadnought. And the rest of the deck is Days Wasteland Stifle. You can still just beat up their lands and mana, Force of Will, plus Dress Down and Doorkeeper Thrall just have text on them for normal matchups. We're just really good against any deck trying to win with Thassa's Oracle. We're really good against any deck trying to win with Urza Saga. We're really good against decks with greedy mana because of the Wastelands and Stifles, and then there's a sideboard back to basics. This is a powerful tempo deck with a cool new toy to play with. Let's get into it. This is Null Drifter Dreadnought. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the men's lifestyle brand that's revolutionizing the landscape of men's grooming. I'm excited to present the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, featuring the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Electric Trimmer. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra takes grooming precision to a new level with their next gen dual skin safe blades, now with an upgraded trimmer blade and interchangeable foil blade for enhanced performance. The upgraded trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cut through hair with ease while being gentle on skin. The foil blade attachment finishes what the trimmer blade started, leaving your shave sleek and bare. The lawnmower has a dual temperature LED light to light up those hard to reach areas and flatter different skin tones. This package includes the Weed Whacker 2.0, a nose and ear hair trimmer built with skin safe technology for those sensitive areas. The lawnmower and Weed Whacker both have rechargeable USB-C lithium ion batteries and they're waterproof. 
Finish up with Crop Soother Aftershave and work Crop Preserver Deodorant into your daily routine for all-day odor protection for your darkest and dampest regions. Check out Manscaped.com and use code Bosch and Roll to get 20% off, free international shipping, plus their jewel pouch boxers and shed carrying case free with purchase of the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. I'm on the draw and run one. Island Ponder Keep. Let's go. I'd be a lot more excited about this hand on the play because it has stifle in it and the cheese factor is high, but I'm still going to keep this. A dress down makes his hand really good. I have a bunch of interaction if my opponent's doing something aggressive. A mountain off a mall to six. Okay. Something aggressive confirmed. Vexing bobble. You sicko. Well, I guess I forced this pitching daze like a chump. Oh, well, yep. I mean, Shadow Realmed by this card on its own. Okay, Goblin Welder is what we're doing. I'm just going to Island Pass because Goblin Welder is a scary card that I can stifle if I need to. Painter Servant. That resolves. Hate that for me. Lava Spur Boots is the last card in their hand. Okay. All right. Well, they are all in here and their cards aren't very good. We'll see what I can make happen out of this. They can just weld into Vexing Bobble and pop it to draw a card. That's basically sacrifice an artifact, pay one mana, draw a card. That doesn't last forever because it's not a loop. Very interested in finding myself a dress down before it's too late. Hey, we found a dress down. Okay. Now I can basically decide to send it on dress down and just hope their next two draws aren't good. Or. I could have wastelanded their ancient tomb and played ponder to try to develop and fend off a little bit. Just hoping for the best here. All right, they're flipping lava spur boots into vexing bauble. That's fine. I can stifle a grindstone activation. I don't have any zero cost cards in my hand. Dress down does not turn off painter servant, by the way. If you're wondering why I haven't played to that out, the dress down. If you dress down in response to painter servant, it never gets name a color. But once it's in play and has named a color, layers mean that it doesn't remove it. It's stupid, but it's true. Okay, I am going to Null Drift here. And I think I want to fetch a Tundra to do that. All right, Null Drifter, make it happen. This Vexing Bobble is making my days bad. If they just top deck Grindstone here, I lose. Okay, they're popping Bobble in response, which means that Daze is back on. And I have a giant annihilator now. Okay, please don't kill me this turn. Urza Saga, please don't have grindstone in your hand. Okay, we haven't died. And them running out the Urza Saga is why I held back the wasteland. I didn't want them to know that was a thing that I could do. I'm going to start by annihilating. Annihilator 1. It's not much, but it's super annoying, especially versus a Daze deck. If I ponder wasteland murktide... That works. I'm going to start with Ponder. Swords to Plowshares. That's more exciting than Wasteland. Or that's more exciting than Murktide. Okay. Tarn, Wasteland, Plow. Put the Plow in my hand. Wasteland, the Urza Saga. And now Plow actually is real interaction for what they're doing. And they're going to run out of permanence pretty quick here, I hope. Painter Servant's attacking. I'm not plowing yet because if I plow now, they can just sack the Painter to Welder. And I don't want it to be that easy on them. I know I could stifle the welder, but that's also kind of a mid use of my resources here. I imagine they'll sack an ancient tomb here, and then I'll wasteland the other one. And then days as live as possible. This is why I kept wasteland to just run them out of permanence. I think if I hold up all my interaction, they will die soon enough or run out of permanence soon enough that I don't need to play Murktide here. Let's see, three, four, five. Yeah, Murktide doesn't even make the attack lethal next turn. Yeah, whether I play Murktide this turn or next turn, the clock is the same. So yeah, I'm just going to hold up my stifles and make sure this welder doesn't do anything important. The decision to play or not play Murktide here, it's an interesting one. And my friend Rebel on Twitter a couple days ago, she's been drawing comparisons between Magic the Gathering strategy and martial arts movies lately. And I've been enjoying the hell out of it. And she pointed out that good players seem to play towards submission, where medium players seem to play towards winning or the kill. 
I guess would be the way to phrase it. Sick. All right, well, I could cast Days on this. And if they try to weld Bobble into Lotus Petal to pay for it, I could stifle that. Anyway, what I'm saying here, uh, or finishing that thought, I get a lot of comments that are like, if you had just shoved Murktide Regent, you would have won a turn earlier. And first of all, in this case, it's not even true. But a lot of the times when people are telling me to shove Murktide Regent and win a turn earlier, it's at the cost of tapping out of all my interaction. And then I might just lose, which is the worst thing you can do in a game of Magic. It doesn't matter if you win a turn earlier, as long as your opponent is dead. And playing towards the opponent being unable to win in the safest possible way is how I play, rather than looking for the fastest possible kill. We did it. Okay, Null Drifter. Hard carried. That ate, what, four or five permanents that game? Hydro Blast and Blue Blast coming in. Null Rod comes in. Back to Basics is interesting, because they do have a bunch of non-basic lands, but they also have a bunch of basic lands and Pyroblast. Vexing Bob was super annoying. I could bring in Containment Priest and try to snipe a Welder activation. I think I'm going to cut my dazes. I'm on the draw versus a Vexing Bobble deck that's also really good at making mana. Most of my removal is exile based, so Surgical Extraction would have to target things that they put there themselves. Counterbalance is interesting. I have a lot of ones and twos in the deck, mostly ones, then zeros, then twos are the spread. Yeah, I think I'm just going to bring in these four cards and call it easy. This hand is not good. Stifle does have a bunch of text versus this matchup, but very little of it is devastating. Like when you stifle a fetch land or stifle a Thassa's Oracle trigger, that shit is devastating. When you stifle a welder trigger, they're, they'll just do it again next turn. All right, I'll keep this one and bottom one of the Dreadnoughts. I needed an enabler, but I play a lot of them. Ancient Tomb, Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Okay. I'm just going to wasteland this Ancient Tomb. Stifle plays versus Soul Cauldron. Exiling my wasteland. They did see a Murktide region. Might as well keep my graveyard empty. They've got a mountain to follow up. I'm looking for Dress Down or Doorkeeper. <laughs> Null Rod's fine, though. I accept that one. Ursus Saga. I think I'd rather stifle Chapter 2 than Chapter 1. Goblin Engineer. I'm going to counter this on the stack before they can put something good in the graveyard. I know they can Soul Cauldron this, but I'm going to Null Rod next turn. Or, okay. Well, Wasteland's better. I was about to start debating whether I'm going to Null Rod or stifle the Make Constructs ability, and Wasteland solved the problem for me. Exiled my Hydro Blast. Great Furnace. Welder doesn't do anything right now. And Null Rod turns off their Great Furnace. Why does this say can be cast by spending mana as always any color? What's creating that effect? Weird. I, I have no idea why that's there. Yeah, Soul Cauldron has some kind of related text to that, but that's not what actually what that card says. Okay, I'm going to Null Rod. I have to be careful about a Dreadnought ending up in my graveyard, because then they can weld my Null Rod into a Rexian Dreadnought. But for now, I just Stone Rain them, and they have a 2-2. Here come the beats. Now I'm looking for a Dress Down, a Doorkeeper. I could just stifle in this Dreadnought. But they're a Pyroblast deck. That makes me a little nervous. It's less nerve-wracking next turn with Null Drifter, because if Null Drifter ends up in the graveyard, that's not something they can weld my Null Rod into. Okay, and I have a lot of life to work with, and they're not really doing anything. That means their hand is all spells. But does it mean they are Pyroblasts? Or does it mean that it's like uncastables because I wastelanded them three times here? Like they have three lands, two lands in the graveyard, plus I turn off the Great Furnace. Their hand is either uncastable or a bunch of interaction. Either way, I found the dress down I was looking for. Hopefully next turn I can just unload Null Drifter and Dreadnought into play. I know they can Pyroblast a dress down. I'm just going to hope they don't. City of Traders, oh. Did we unlock all the spells? Yeah, Fable's about as good as this gets. It does tap them out, though. End step, dress down. This dress down draws a Brainstorm, and there is a Meticulous Archive in the list that I can fetch. Get some selection here. Bonus Ponder. I'm actually going to Graveyard Ponder, because I'm about to draw a bunch of cards anyway. Ooh, Null Drifter again. Okay, Evoke Null Drifter. Draw two cards. Force backup now. 
Dreadnought, let's party. Pretty good turn. Okay, can I hold for one turn? They can discard artifacts into their graveyard that Welder can start flipping into, but Welder can't use those either. Snaring Bridge, well, force that pitching stifle. I guess that doesn't matter. They can just bring it right back. That was bad. I was supposed to pitch the Brainstorm and then stifle the, the Welder activation. Whoops. Is there any removal in this deck? Uh, there's one Brazen Borrower, right? Yeah, I was supposed to keep the stifle. That was loosey goosey. Okay, brainstorm first. Found a blue blast. That isn't super helpful. Definitely don't need Merktide Regent. Yeah, if I had thought about that for one second, I would be attacking for 16 and annihilating them this turn. Dang, I blew it. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. We'll figure it out. I have a doorkeeper thrall. That can turn on the second Null Drifter in my hand. And now we're just digging for outs to Ensnaring Bridge. That was a huge, huge spew. They can't really do anything either. But that's not particularly comforting. When their deck can win without combat and mine can't. If I get enough Plows and Blue Blasts stored up. Null Drifter draws two and then comes into play. Unless they kill Doorkeeper Thrall. Containment Priest. That could slow down some Welder shenanigans, I guess. You can also attack for one. Got him. Lying! Okay, we're in there. Pushing damage. They need to get fully Hellbent to stop me from hurting them at all. There's two Grindstones in the graveyard. Which, I feel like lists usually only have two. They have plenty of access to it with the Welders. Okay, there's a Stifle. Starts to move in the right direction of being useful. Back with my Thrall. They can start making copies with Reflection, but the copies don't do anything right now. The Constructs exist. I do have to be aware that they can flip their bridge out of play, attack, and then flip their bridge back into play with their two Welders. I'm not going to interact with this. If they Pithing Needle, Flooded Strand, it's fine. Vexing Bobble, we're way past the point where I'm trying to do anything for free. Okay. If I Force of Will this... I'm one mana short of Containment Priesting it back if they go right away, but if they wait, I can Priest it whenever they try to get it back. I'm not going to fetch in the end step. I don't want to give them any indication that the window's open to get Painter back. Okay, Brainstorm, let's go. Fix my problems, all of them. I don't need a Dreadnought, and I don't need a Misty Rainforest. Fetch, Ponder. I can still cast all the other spells in my hand. Brazen Borrower, we found it. Okay. I do not shuffle. Now I have to navigate the game to a spot where they can't do everything. And we're not there yet. I'm drawing another Null Drifter next turn, which is another draw two. I might just be super patient, because they have functionally three Goblin Welders in play right now with the Reflection. They're copying Construct. That's allowed. They're welding a Construct into a Painter, which I will delete. They can weld again in response. I could stifle the second one. Okay, so stifle that activation. And now Painter gets deleted. And I can Blue Blast one of the Painters, or one of the, the Welders now, while they can't copy it. I think doing that makes sense. If they can get a plus one counter on a creature, it will have the ability of Goblin Engineer. Yeah, so I need to find a Plow... I'm out of Hydroblast, so I'm looking for Plow, basically, to, to make this work. Evoke that monster again. Three of these now. Ponder. Wasteland, Murktide, Misty. None of these are good. Shuffle this. Motobug. Great. Okay. Now attack with Doorkeeper Thrall. Keep the pressure up. I could try to bounce something that is not an artifact. Like, if I try to bounce Reflection of Kiki Jiki, they might end up with four cards in their hand. But if one card in their hand is a Red Blast or a Lightning Bolt or even like Surgical Extraction, like uh, Simeon Spirit Guide, like it doesn't matter. Like anything that they could get out of their hand, then I've wasted my best piece of interaction. I'm way ahead here. I just need to not mess up. Speaking of messing up, they just passed the turn with four cards in hand, which. Leans into the thing I was saying of they could probably cast one of them as an instant. 
I'm just going to move into combat as quickly as I can and see if we get there. All right, well, I can declare attackers. Annihilate three. Can't imagine what those four cards are that they couldn't put a single one of them into play. Annihilate three. This is 13 flying damage. They're at 14. Copying a construct token, that doesn't matter. I mean, they can annihilate that. Annihilated the Great Furnace, the Vexing Bauble, and the Construct Token, I imagine. Yep. Oh, if I had Dressed Downed, then they would have not had those to sacrifice. Okay. I mean, that was a really good turn. I was mostly just trying to get into combat before they realized what was going on. Okay, they're welding Construct Token into Vexing Bauble. I could Dress Down now. Oh, I think it's better to dress down in their end step, because if I dress down turning off Goblin Welder, then I can just bounce the Ensnaring Bridge and we're good. I don't need my creatures to have abilities on my turn. Okay, wow, they just couldn't get under four cards in hand for two turns in a row. And then Null Drifters rode. This game was a lot longer than it needed to be just because I pitched the wrong thing to my Force of Will a thousand turns ago, but we were also never really in danger of losing. Sweet. On to the next one. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw for round two. I'm going to keep this hand. It has Doorkeeper Thrall and Dress Down plus Null Drifter and Force Blue card if I need it. I just noticed that Null Drifter does not have Devoid. And it's funny because it doesn't need it because it's already colorless. It just has an Evoke that is blue. And they decided to color the card blue for that. Weird. I don't know if I like that, but I mean, it tells the correct story. Underground Sea Pass. We'll see if they cycle a troll here or cast an Entomb or what's going on. And set Brainstorm. All right, this feels more like Storm or Doomsday now than it does like Scam. Which I hope is true, because I let on the Tundra in case I needed to Swords to Plowshares, where this is really bad if I get Wastelanded. Okay, they are Scam. And they searched up an underground sea. I would still prefer not to get wastelanded here. Okay, polluted delta, go. We dodged. Okay, very interested in finding a land in my next two cards. Wasteland pass, definitely not wasting them. This matchup is very dangerous because getting your Null Drifter reanimated sucks. This is one of the more interesting decks that exists that is being particularly oppressed by the Grief Scam metagame. Entomb, I believe I have to force of will that. Doorkeeper Thrall does interact positively with both Atraxa and Archon. Okay, they force back pitching days. All right, you're going to get an Entomb. Let's hope they don't have two dazes. Archon, reanimate. Thrall, moment of truth. Please be out of gas, please be out of gas. Okay, Archon resolves, they're at 10. Doesn't do anything, then I plow it. I am not going to risk finding another land off brainstorm I'm just gonna remove the thing i can remove and my mana is more important than theirs i am not gonna wasteland them i have a handful of insane three drops if i can get a third land we're in there okay hit let's go another tundra evoke null drifter I draw two draw two even if they counter this yeah force pitching atraxa the old what even is this? All right, so I went up two cards, and they went down two cards. That's a four for one. Deal. And now Atrax and Archon are both in exile, so their big Dumbos are gone. We only have to worry about the little Dumbos now. Or worry about my own Null Drifter. That's a, a reasonable thing to worry about. Okay, three drifting. <laughs> yeah! Scooping to Null Drifter. Love it. Okay, Surgical Extraction. Containment Priest. Raftiger's Cage, probably Lavinia. Counterbalance. Hall Breacher's a maybe. We'll see what I end up having room for. I don't like Force of Will versus Scam. Stifle is pretty medium against them. They do cheat on their land count pretty hard. Yeah, I can see Stifle being useful, actually. 
I'm not going to have room for Hallbreacher. I already determined that. Might not have room for Lavinia either. I want to keep my deck coherent. There are a lot of things that cost one colorless mana in this deck, so I'm not trying to board out a Wasteland even though I don't like it for the matchup. Days versus Stifle is kind of where I'm at now. I think I'm going to shave Days and just try to beat them with my cards. I never like back to basics in matchups like this, even though they barely have any basics. Because even if they fetch like underground C, underground C, underground C, and then I jam back to basics, they're a deck with Daze, they're a deck with Grief, they're a deck, they usually do have one or two basics. They're a deck that could just kill me without any lands by turn three. Yep, we are. We got Griefed. There's Null Drifter. I'm going to get a basic and then cast Ponder. And hope I find days or surgical. Found days, cool. I'll put the wasteland on top. Unfortunately, I have to keep that. But I can't really beat an entomb monster here. Okay, they didn't have that. Okay, weird. Pumping the brakes. I think it's more important to get the bad card off the top of my deck and increase my card quality than it is to wasteland them. And now I can hard cast days if I feel like that's correct. Animate dead. Okay, well. Can't tase that anyway, so go ahead, take my Null Drifter. A powerful reanimation target emerges. Fetch for Meticulous Archive. Brainstorm, basically the best card I could draw here. All right, Brainstorm, fix everything. Do your job. Plow Stifle. All right, there's no Shuffle here, but I can. Swords to Plowshares, the Grief, and then Wasteland them. I still don't like Wasteland here, but. We're in a spot where I'm not doing anything else for a few turns, and if I can reduce their ability to play the game, that's good for me. Brainstorm. Good find. They know I have days. They've got a wasteland too. We're about to play stupid magic for a while. But luckily for me, I am flooding out, which is perfect for a stupid magic wasteland fight. Bang. Nobody's playing magic on my watch. I can stifle a fetchland or a cycled troll. Oh no, another Underground Sea. It's not fair. Okay, basic lands in play. I'm through my Brainstorm. They have one more card to get through theirs. Okay. Uh, stifling this makes it so they have to draw their last card and they don't get a replacement land. I think this is worth stifling, even though the troll does end up in the graveyard anyway. Dang, just can't even stop this mana denial. Not even a little. Psychic Frog, good follow-up for them. Okay. I'm going to be dress downing at some point, probably in my own end step. Yeah, this means Psychic Frog doesn't have any abilities on their turn. Okay, finding Brainstorm off the dress down is really good. They surveilled away a Wasteland, sandbagging the Tundra paid off. Frog attacks for one. I do need to handle this thing because it will grind them out. Psychic Frog is on my list very soon to play for the channel. The Psychic Frog Grixis Elber decks look really good. Double Days can beat a Bowmaster if I have to, but for fuck's sake, please don't have that card. Okay, we dodged. Not particularly well, though. No answers to anything here. No like way to play the game here. Yeah, the Psychic Frog's going to get a card off me. Hate that a lot. And I am just going to fetch now. I'm fine getting a Tundra. I have enough mana to play the game if they want to Wasteland me here. And two Wastelands are gone already. They usually play three. So it begins. The Psychic Frog Runaway. Right, come on, removal spell. Something to do. Okay, that's a removal spell and something to do. I'm going to Wasteland their Undercity Sewers. I'm just trying to keep these dazes as good as they can be. And then when do I want to borrow? Probably now. Petty Theft the Frog. Force of Will. That plays around double days perfectly. Dang. All right, yep, that was a good one. Force Pitching Days. Turns out Ophidians running amok on empty boards full of counter magic are uh, pretty good. Discarded Archon, just another six energy that the scam deck gets out of Psychic Frog. It pitches to grief and force. It dumps your reanimation targets when you don't want them in your hand. It's actual card advantage in a deck that didn't have it before. Dreadnought is big enough to still flip this game if I can find an enabler. Psychic Frog has drawn three cards already and gotten in for five damage. Or gotten in for six, because I dressed down one of the draws, but it still attacked that turn. Reanimate. Days. Days. Okay, we fended that off. 
Now let's draw a dress down or stifle and shove this dreadnought. No! Alright, well, my deck still has brainstorms in it, so we'll play the fetch land instead of the island. Frog's fourth card now. Insane. Completely insane. Another frog. Oh no. And these things can fly sometimes, if the controller wants them to. Oh god, alright, I'm done. I'm not beating, I'm drawing two cards a turn. Okay, what do we do against Scam? This is game three. I'm already boarded. Because that's how game three works. Horrifying that that already was a sideboard game, and I just felt completely hopeless once we got into the mid-game. But my deck didn't do anything. I literally never got any part of my deck to function, so maybe I shouldn't feel too bad about that. Ball Breacher does beat Psychic Frog heads up. Or at least, like, makes it worse. I forgot I was down to three days, and then I just died with all three of them in my hand. Oh no. I guess I double days something, and then... Okay. Uh, Am I on zero counter spells? I still have Surgical, Grafdigger's Cage, Containment Priest, Counterbalance. So it's not really zero counter spells. Okay, I'm going for it. Hall Breachers are in. Zero land's gonna mulligan this. Come on, deck! Don't multiply me and scam, you idiot. Okay, I guess I'm keeping this, even though it's horrible. Okay, so my choices here are bottom the Dreadnought and a land, and just keep double surgical to make sure the graveyard doesn't happen, and then dress down is the best cantrip. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna bottom Dreadnought and Flooded Strand here. That sucked so hard. When I kept seven also. Yep, Grief Pitching Dismember. I ended up taking the Surgicals rather than trying to send it on the Quick Dreadnought because there's no universe where a Quick Dreadnought works against Scam. It's not that quick. And when I'm on five like this, my first priority is don't die to some shit. And the Double Surgical is pretty helpful in that regard. If they have Force Backup or just another Grief or whatever, then it gets harder, but at least don't die to some shit. That box is checked. Ondor did not shuffle. I think I am going to get the Medicalous Archive here, even though it's risky. I feel like I need cards to play. Oh god. Well, I'll put it on top because I cannot... I can't surveil that away versus the reanimate deck. And this does give me a high roll potential if I end step dressed down. Upkeep cycling a troll, that's fine. Tutor their basic swamp. And they're trying to reanimate grief. I will I'll put up the fight that I have for this. Animate dead and tomb psychic frog, okay. So they're trying to send it on another round of monster. Their next land does it all at once. Drax and Archon both still in. Four psychic frogs in the list. No orcish or nope, two orcish bowmaster. No Dothy Voidwalker. Only three in tombs. Powder keg. Four wasteland, not three. Okay. All right. Well, I will cast my end step dress down and hope that one of my top two cards is a land to get something going here. Dress down and we did it. All right. I'm going to evoke this monster and hope they don't draw a land over the top of my land because if they entomb and reanimate an archon here, I lose everything, but I think going for it was better than not going for it. Upkeep and Tomb. Don't draw the Black Source. Don't draw the Black Source. Don't draw the Black Source. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Get annihilated. Dramatic pause. Oh no. Wow, okay. They just can't beat the Annihilator 1 when they only have two permanents. Tight sweat. GG's. On to the next one. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm, good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set Tournament Edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set. And a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The
I'm on the draw for round three. I have Forest Blue card and an Enabler for all my nonsense. I'm in Misty Rainforest. Tropical Island, sweet. Nadu Gaming? Zenith for zero. Yeah, this feels like a Nadu deck. I'm going to set up a fetch for Meticulous Archive and try to get some selection. Wirewood Symbiote. Okay. I know Hello Newton has played an Elves build with Nadu in it. That might be what this is. Allosaurus Shep. Okay. Well, nice job, Force of Will. Endorkit with Rawl is good against Elves. Let's see if it holds. A meticulous Archive. Don't need a Scalding Tarn. Not one bit. I do need a Dreadnought quite a bit. Okay. Doorkeeper Thrall can hopefully stop whatever their win is here. If they just like shove natural order. Oh, baby. Here we go. Well, this is bad. They can untap Nadu and various creatures a bunch of times with their stuff. This is not like an unlimited infinite thing, but it does go really deep. Wirewood Symbiote revealed. Elsor Shepherd, smart. And another untap, which flips a land into play. Elves has always been full of little targeted interactions like this. We're in Ranger back in play, which resets it. Virtual Ranger, okay. That doesn't tap. Imagine if this said tap two target elves you control, but it does not. It's a mana ability, don't worry. I'm basically going to play Doorkeeper Thrall the first time an ETB effect shows up, which hasn't happened yet. They still have this Ranger activation and this Symbiote activation. Okay, they just used Symbiote to untap Ranger, flipped another Misty Rainforest into play. Fetched a basic forest, Quarian Ranger's back. If they don't go off here and try to make a cheeky attack, I might be able to eat the Shepherd in combat. Though at this point, I might be more worried about Symbiote than Shepherd. Aquarian Ranger untaps something, flips another Aquarian Ranger. That's another activation. And untapping something, flipping a Traxa. Jesus. All right, well, there's that card in their hand. All right, please try to get a cheeky little attack in. Please chip for damage. Please chip for damage. Please chip for damage. What could go wrong? Don't be a coward. Okay, they are chipping for damage. I believe both symbiotes have been used already. Am I worried about Shepard at this point, or is Symbiote worse? Because Symbiote is the extra card advantage. Yeah, I'm actually more worried about Symbiote than Shepard right now. Your Traxa doesn't work. I mean, she's still a 7-7, but doesn't work. Ugh, this hand. Okay, I'll shove a Dreadnought and just F6, basically. Murktide's not close to being active. Doorkeeper Thrall can't attack because not as huge. And we'll see how many activations they want to pop off in the end step here, if any. Yep, they are using some stuff in the end step to get the Nadu triggers. They flipped another Quarian Ranger, picking up uh, an elf to do it. I'm pretty sure they can cast a Trax of this turn with Virtual Ranger if they want to do that. They're untapping Dried Arbor, flipped a Burden Catacombs into play. Are they out of fetchable forests yet? I feel like this deck can't play that many, and we've already been through a bunch of them. There's probably a second Dryad Arbor in there at least. I'm just waiting for the moment they flip Gradle and the game ends. Findhorn Elves, hell yeah. Going back to the early days. I foiled out Elves back in the day, and I maintain foiled out Elves just in case. And Findhorn Elves didn't have a foil for a very long time. And then it was in a From the Vaults, which the foiling was horrific. It was just so ugly, but you still had to play it because it was the only foil. And now there are like gorgeous old border foils, but this card is played nowhere. So shout out to this opponent or whoever built their deck for bringing back Findhorn Elves. Llanowar Elves also. There's a Traxa and some number of forests in their hand. I've honestly lost count. I would have wrote it down in paper, but they just kind of disappear when my opponent clicks on Quarian Ranger on MTGO. They're showing five mana now with multiple untaps still around. I don't know if they can still get to a Traxa at this point, unless the Nadu hits a land along the way. And another Shepherd. Shepherd's in play now. Another Trigger, another Llanowar Elf. Still no Cradle. Continue to fade the, the game ending Cradle. Okay, it looks like I'm going to get an attack with Phyrexian Dreadnought in. Brainstorm was the best draw, and it's the reason I haven't cracked this fetch land yet. Come on, deck. Dressdown is really good. Stifle is really good. 
Right. Force of Will is useless. The lands are not really useful either. They have double Shepherd, though. Yeah, I'm not getting through these two Shepherds. I'm going to put back the Force of Will and the Basic Island. And I will attack for 12. It would be sick if they, like, gang block it and then try to activate Allosaurus Shepherd, and I could stifle that and just Wrath of God them. Okay, we're getting a gang block. Oh, baby, sign me up for this. Or they might just be doing math of, like, how many 1-1s one -ones can I sacrifice to not be on a two-turn clock. That would be the super tight play. Or if they just don't think I know that they can make six mana here, that would be great, too. Oh, no, they're backing off. Get back in. Get back in. Line them all up. Put some more in there. Uh, boo. Boo. They probably realized it might be better to just attack with all those same creatures and make me dead instead of trying to not be dead on their own side. They are three now, though, which is a very exciting number for them to be at compared to the 15 they were at a moment ago. They can still just continue flipping insane numbers of cards out of their deck. Do I dress down now? I think I do, actually. Yeah, I'm going to hit Island and dress down right now in my end step. Any Nadu triggers they want to get, they better get them now. And they have to do them all without knowing what the final piece of information is going to be. And then these creatures won't have any abilities on their turn either. Okay, not doing their last land up in response. Found Once Upon a Time. Casting Once Upon a Time with Virtual Ranger mana. They've now viewed more than half their deck. I haven't seen a cradle yet. Them casting a Traxa, she won't have abilities. Target creature gains trample. Oh, hell yeah, that rules. That's sick with Nadu. Gross. Okay, I found the combo. I understand now. Wait, was this dress down in my hand when I bottomed the Force of Will? What am I even doing with my life? I had it all. Yeah, I don't need this Tundra in my hand. That could be Force of Will easily, and then... Yikes. Okay, that was a huge mistake. There's Tropical Island. Well, Virtual Ranger doesn't make mana this turn. Nadu doesn't trigger this turn. I could just daze this. Holy smokes. Dazing a card out of elves when they have all of these things in play? Dress down is busted. What an insulting line that was. But I love it for me. Okay, and I still have the stifle if they try to line up a giant block on Dreadnought this turn. Yeah, Nadu. Nadu's big enough to rumble. Get in here. Birdman. And step. I have already fetched, right? Yeah, I fetched after I brainstormed last turn, so these are all new cards. Okay, they gotta go to cleanup, and then Dreadnought is uh, a serious monster right now. I'm gonna start with Brainstorm. Double Stifle. Let's do it. Okay. Put back all the lands this time. And Dreadnought, make it happen, buddy. I gotta put 10 toughness in front of this thing. And it has to be actual material toughness, not block plus buff, because the buff's not going to work. And they can untap Nadu, so Doorkeeper Thrall should not be attacking. Four creatures in front of Dreadnought. Five. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're doing it. Exactly six mana. Stifle that. Got another stifle if they can do Nadu tricks and somehow go again. Okay. Begin the Nadu tricks. They flip to Windswept Teeth. That's two mana, if there's a fetchable forest left in the deck, which I'm not convinced on. We're about to find out. Fetch. Okay, there is one. All right, that's two mana to go again. Untapping Finhorn Elves is three mana. Nadu triggered Nadu, so that's nothing. So three mana. Loaded a mana. Untapped Dried Arbor again. This is going to be four. Added a Llanowar Elf to the hand. I think they forgot to float mana off Dried Arbor in response to that query and untap. Okay, two floating. Untapping Lenor Elves. This is 3-4. Wow! From the Jaws of Defeat. Okay, yeah. I mean, sometimes a 12-12 Trample just gets it done. That was crazy. A Containment Priest definitely coming in. Graft Digger's Cage coming in. Hall Breacher does not stop Nadu. Back to basics. I mean, they took all their own lands out of play. I don't think that's the solution. It would be hard for them to cast Natural Order or Green Sun Zenith if I Lavinia, though it's likely to be uncounterable if I do cast it. I think these dazes come out for the two lock pieces, and that's all I do. And Counterbalance isn't terrible unless they have Shepherd. I guess dr with four dress downs in the deck and four plows, I have eight answers to their four Shepherds. Assuming they play four, also assuming that 
or re also recognizing that the eight, however many they have, they have more routes to it than that because they have zeniths. Okay, here we go. Let's try to do it. Cage, force of will. I, I like this hand a lot. Two enablers for the Null Drifter. Ways to slow them down, I hope. Lanamore Elves, you're in there. Graftigger's Cage, you're in there. I will force Nadu if they just shove it here. Grand Ranger, this is worth a bunch of mana here. Findhorn Elves. Untapping Lanamore Elves. Quarian Ranger, oh yeah, we're doing it. Okay, right, three cards in hand, one of them's Tropical Island. Containment Priest, nice. All right, Containment Priest and Doorkeeper Thrall. I have two Cake Bears that both have Flash. They both are relevant combat objects because they're both bigger than their squad of 1-1s one here. I still don't really want to see an Atraxa. Or I, I don't want to see a, a Shepherd. It would be hard for them to get an Atraxa in. I don't want to see Shepherd. I would force Nadu. A Seiju, my Keijo. Okay, you got me. All right, I'll get a Tundra. Good thing I have this backup containment priest. Kachow, the juke. When you just have a little of everything. Lenore elves exiled. You can fail to find. You don't have to exile a creature when somebody flashes in a priest in response to your zenith. But you can just pick a creature you don't want to draw and take the, the deck thinning for what it's worth. Which I imagine is what my opponent just did. Lenore elves doesn't seem very good there. But I also doubt that's what they were going for. Oh, baby. Do I want to engage in counterbalance gaming, or do I just want to try to set up Doorkeeper Thrall into Null Drifter? I am going to keep the counterbalance because it pitches to force and lets me keep my dress down. Okay, I'm just going to pass the turn with no plays and work towards a universe where next turn I have a Null Drifter in play. Nadu, Winged Wisdom, Force of Will, Pitching Counterbalance. Okay, I'm going to flash in Thrall in the end step. It is a flyer that deals damage, and Dress Down is much more well-rounded against their deck. Dress Down is also blue in case I find a Force of Will off this Null Drifter. They do have a Quarian Ranger in play, so Wasteland's not that good. Yeah, I'll just fly for one. All right, they got one card left in hand. Natural Order and Zenith don't work. Fingers crossed. Land or Elves. Moment of Truth. What's your last card? Now there's a Tropical or a Hedge Maze in hand, and they're spamming card selection activations. Good call. Dump to Zenith. Looks like I'm getting a turn. Stifle, I love to see. I'm going to fly for five and annihilate one of these permanents. Probably see a land where I'll fit the graveyard here. Oh, they got rid of Tropical Island. All right. Yeah, I guess Cradle is probably their livest out here. Bindhorn Elves is back. Oh, they have two Quarian Rangers, so they can still spam this activation. Yeah, I actually got confused by the mismatch art. I was waiting for them to activate this Quarian Ranger, then I was going to wasteland them afterwards, but this one over here activated instead. Deceptive. I'm going to jam all these Doorkeeper Thralls into play. This is just extra damage, and one of them changes the clock. The second one is a little extra flavor. Speaking of extra flavor, I'm going to evoke another Null Drifter. Fill me up. Another Dreadnought, or a Dreadnought. And Dreadnought does not change the clock, and it does tap me out of all of my interactions. So I'm just going to hold back the Dreadnought and hold up Stifle plus Dress Down to get through their turn. Okay, they're dead on board without the Dreadnought. Let's go. Guy's Cradle. There it is. What's your last card? Is it any good? Okay, yeah, they said in the chat they just wanted to show me they are playing Cradle. Yeah, uh, took a long time to find one. It didn't matter when they did. Sweet tech, though. I feel very lucky to get away with game one. Game two was way more on my pace. On to the next one. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. On the draw for round number four, I'm going to keep my hand. It's got ponders and some interaction and my whole combo. I've drawn this one-up Murktide region a lot, and I have basically never been happy to see it. I understand why it's in the deck, but like you want to find it later. You don't want it in the opening hand like this. 
Okay, lots of ponders. Ponder wants to find lands. That technically counts. Okay, I'm going to put the force in my hand. And my intention next turn is to ponder first and then play Meticulous Archive so I don't just bin that brainstorm willy nilly. Brainstorm, not looking for days on a turn two brainstorm. Now, without knowing the matchup, Volcanic Island. All right, we got a little Teamer Delver in the chat. I hope this is like a cool Teamer Nadu brew. That's something I'm thinking about. Teamer and Bug both play with Nadu pretty well. well. That's interesting. If I bin the brainstorm, I can dress down in the next end step and play two dreadnoughts on the following turn. Or wait, no. What have I done? I just clicked wrong. I nav I narrated one thing and then did a different one. Okay, don't shuffle the ponder. Okay, I just don't surveil. Well, I surveil, but keep it on top. This works out the same. Except I get to keep a brainstorm. Rather than see a random card at the end of the chain. Okay, they just did full nothing. Looks like they're mildly brainstorm locked over there. Or they're setting up a uh, Seek the Beast for my end step. Okay, cool. Just mildly brainstorm locked. I'm going to end step dress down. Because that seems really good to do versus an opponent who's struggling like this. And I am interested in dedicating resources to this fight if we end up in a fight. Where they're about to go to discard anyway, so they're incentivized to make a fight out of this. Oh, force pitching show and tell. Yikes. All right, well. Now that they're a show and tell deck, what does that change? Okay, uh, maybe I should just keep Force of Will in my hand now that I know they're a show and tell deck. That was a really revealing pitch. Okay, I'm going to brainstorm and just look for another way to cash out these dreadnoughts. Okay, didn't find that. I can put back one of the dreadnoughts and the planes and then cast Ponder and likely end up shuffling that. Oh, or find a dress down. That works too. Okay, I'll take the plates and make my land drop. You put the ponder cards in, you put the ponder cards out. Okay, I'll try to make two dreadnoughts again next turn. They've assembled their third land. Force of will. Eggs. Oh, nope. They tapped out. Unfortunately, Moto already revealed me losing one life to force of will. But yeah, days. That card works. Cool. Foolishly revealed that my hand has force of will in it, but it's okay. Hopefully they will be dead. The turn after next. It's their turn six. I want them dead on their turn seven. Okay, now days isn't going to work anymore. Force pitching the other days. That's three show and tells. You can kind of understand why they kept the hand at this point. Two dreadnoughts still force back up. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Pass. Okay, let's hope they're dead. Brainstorm. If they had show and tell there, I don't know. Would have lost my mind a little bit. Down to four cards in hand. They could still cantrip and find something to do this turn. But the thing about show and tell is you need at least one more card to back it up in your hand. Petty theft. I think I just want to push the win here. Why give them another turn? Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. If they still were representing show and tell mana, I probably would have just backed off of that. But okay. Force, force, containment, priest. Counterbalance. Back to basics actually looks like I could catch them here. All Breacher. We saw red mana, but we saw blue and green spells. I could see arguments for 13 cards here. Uh, we're probably not going to do all that, but let's see where this lands. Time to make a tier list. Force of Negation is definitely coming in. Containment Priest. Not as important as Force, but it's the second most important thing. I think Counterbalance is the tier after that. All these three drops are after that. Lavinia is good if they are an omniscient stack, and mid if they're not. She's probably closer to counterbalance than anything else. Probably put surgical here and then the red blast here. Okay, let's see how deep into this pile I can get. I wonder if this is Nadu show and tell. That would be sick. I'm still cutting all my sword splashers till they show me a creature though. I only have one three drop in my whole deck. Counterbalance sucks. It can make it harder for them to set up, but I'm not interested in that. Lavinia. Dress down's good. They're likely to play around days more now. I still want some in to keep them honest. Dreadnought is a murder machine. Murktide Regent's blue. Stifle might be medium. The thing about Surgical is I have to get the first show and tell into the graveyard before that does anything. But it is pretty good after that point. Do I want to mess with a Dreadnought or Stifle to get one more card in? 
currently a bunch of hate monsters and two forces. Yeah, I guess I'm going to stop here for now until I know more about their deck. We saw a Veil of Summer. They surveilled past it at the end. But we mostly just saw Show and Tells and Force of Wills. Okay, Force, but no blue card. Red not no setup. This is a mulligan. Okay, this is a quasi-interactive hand. I'm going to keep it and bottom the Dreadnought. I'm thinking about the fail case, where if I just don't draw a setup thing, Dull Drifter is still Divination, where Dreadnought is nothing. Okay, Dress Down's cool. Pass. Fetch land. I'm going to stifle this so hard. Bang. Coming for you. We saw three colors, zero basic lands game one, and now they're on basic island, and we hit them with a stifle. That was really good. So the context of everything involved in that was nice. Another basic land. Did I see that mountain? I'm getting flashbacks that maybe there was a mountain last game. Doorkeeper Thrall. Okay, I mean, I'm casting Null Drifter. Because this does something even if they counter it. Okay, passing with Force Up and Daze. Because so I found another blue card. If they don't deliver something this turn, the Annihilator 1 is just going to keep them in the garbage for the rest of time. That was a huge stifle. Did not shuffle Ponder, Volcanic Islands here. Pyroblast is not effective versus my card. It's too big for Lightning Bolt. Let's try to annihilate. Oh yeah. Put that basic mountain in the graveyard. Oh, the Valk. Wow, okay. So they still have some plan to do stuff. I think I'm going to hold on to the Brainstorm in case I need it, because my hand currently does interact multiple ways. <laughs> yeah, keep the Brainstorm as Force Fodder, and then annihilate one of these basics, and... Going for the flawless victory here. I probably could have fetched the meticulous archive in the end step, but I'm enjoying myself. Okay, sweet. All right, opponent's fetching. He got one through on me. Garbage of flowers. Okay, that card's really good. I'm going to cast Force of Negation. Yeah. Okay. I can see wh why they were still playing to it. That that carpet would have actually jumped them out of that. Cool stuff though. Null Drifter, just chewing up permanence. Onto the final trophy round. On the draw in the final round, I believe that was five die rolls lost. Yet I remain undefeated. I cannot be brought down into the mud. Life is good. Existence is joy. I'm keeping my hand. Got a brainstorm, half my combo, plus force blue card. Not going to lose to Wasteland here. Just rolled up on lands, can play on basics if I need to. Opponent's on six. Chrome mocks. All right, off we go. What's the flavor of this? Red. That's a Fiery Confluence. All right, so Reverse is Red Stompy. He's on a Malta 6, and multiple mana sources that require two cards to function. Blood Moon going to zero cards, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's annoying that I have to force this, because if I had even one turn to play a fetch land, I would just ignore it. But I am going to force it. They're all in on that. I kept the Dress down. I can present a Dreadnought on my turn 3, even through a Blood Moon. Chalice of the Void would be abysmal. I think I'm going to fetch Meticulous Archive. I'm not worried about Blood Moon anymore. Tundra to the Graveyard. Stifle is mid. Oh, wait, I can just stifle out the Dreadnought now. No, Stifle's very good. <laughs> JK, almost forgot this is a thing I can do in my deck. All right, Phyrexian Dreadnought. Stifle. Okay, just cut a whole turn off the clock. Let's do that against a Hellbent opponent. City of Traitors. Okay, they could fire up their Den of the Bugbear, then die. I think I'm going to Ponder first. I'd really just like to find a Force of Will. Null Drifter is not what I'm after here. Shuffle. Doorkeeper Thrall. Dress Down can shut down Broadside Bombardiers. And I can continue to apply pressure if they just draw, like, a Shatter or something. We have seen Fire Confluence in the main. It's under this Chrome Box right now. But I can continue to apply pressure if they draw that. Most of the draws in their deck, they just die, though. Okay. Red Prison is the name of the game here. Force of Negation comes in. Hydro Blast. Daze is not great versus their deck. I don't have a lot of answers to Chalice of the Void, other than counter spells. Stifle is good at shoving Phyrexian Dreadnought into play, but it's not very good versus their deck structurally. So I'm going to get a Daze back in here. Do I want Null Rod instead of Daze? Null Rod is kind of a mid-game payoff, but if they have Chrome Mox in for mana, or if they're on a the One Ring build of this, that card's really good. I haven't seen the One Ring. I would bring in Hull Breacher if I had seen it. Is Null Rod worth the squeeze here? 
Yeah, I'll try it. Okay. Playing it like this. I can still win through a chalice. It just becomes really hard. I need to dress down or doorkeeper thrall out a null drifter. That's how that happens. There is literally one answer to Chalice of the Void in the 75. On the draw here, I have a Force of Will and a Route to Null Drifter. I will keep. Trophy on the line here. All right, play into my Null Rod. Feed me. Broadside, boom be dooms Can I beat these guys? Probably not. I will force this. Okay, sick. All right, well, that makes my decision easy. I was about to start debating whether I wasteland here or try to play my own game, but one, drawing one-drop interaction is a busto. Okay, options here include fetch planes and try to ignore this, fetch island and try to ignore this, or just counter it and move forward with my game plan. I think I'm going to fetch Tundra and move forward with my game plan. Because unfortunately, Null Drifter costs blue mana to play, where if this was just Dreadnought, I would have fetched planes and let Blood Moon resolve. Oh, great, obviously. Okay, um, well, I'm going to ignore all of this mana denial that I have and just try to put a monster into play here. The opponent is passing with no play. Or Keeper Thrall. They could have Stomp or Dead Gone. Okay, I'm going to attack first. Okay, Phyrexian Dreadnought with Wasteland available. That's in. Wasteland you. Okay, I mean, this looks pretty good. There are cards they could have, but not that many. And they didn't play a land or a spell last turn. And now they have one third of the mana they had available last turn. So they've either been setting up an answer to Dreadnought, or they're just dead. Yeah, sweet! The trophy collected! Another Dreadnought trophy on the channel remains one of the winningest cards in the history of the Boston Roll universe. It's probably close to overtaking Uro. Someone did the math like probably five or six months ago, like went through all the old Fibos, and Uro was my number one trophy card with Dreadnought close behind it. And Uro has kind of fallen off, and Dreadnought remains freaking Dreadnought. Null Drifter was awesome in having actual card advantage plus a thing that attacks on an angle that is unusual. Like it is also just a 4 4 flying, just bashing in the sky. But Annihilator 1 just versus that. Painter player who could just never get enough permanence to do anything versus that show and tell player who could just never have three mana to cast their show and tell. Just chugga chugga. Doubling the outs of really good game shifting monsters to cheat in was huge for this deck. I think I want at least one or two more answers to permanence in this deck. I don't know if I play two Brazen Borrower or put some version of disenchant in the sideboard or something like that. I mean, not actual disenchant, but you know, I mean, in the, the extended universe of strictly better disenchants that exist right now. Just think about that a little bit. Hull Breacher is also a pretty specific and clunky and weird card that I usually don't enjoy putting in decks that aren't trying to wheel or really leverage it. I imagine these are the slots I'd look for for that other thing, but if there are specific matchups out there that were soft to, but Hull Breacher fixes, then sure, I guess that makes sense. But like, I'm not bringing this in versus Scam or Delver. What are we looking for with a Hull Breacher? That's just minor nitpicks to like what metagame you want to play against. But the deck itself, pretty insane. Spunky, thank you for the opportunity to play this. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.